how society just feels weird. There's like the culture rot going on. Kind of the points touched up on the last video, just something's off after COVID. Nothing ever got back to normal. And just the way people treat each other and how we look at each other and, you know, how like the establishments aren't as busy as they used to be. The clubs, the bars, there's no lines outside. It's uh, kind of we're all noticing kind of the same thing. People don't really keep up with relationships anymore. What's going on? Like family, it got toxic to talk about after, you know, the vaccine thing. You know, like did you get vaccinated? Oh, you didn't. Oh, you're responsible for endangering us all. You know, like the. The mood soured in families and with politics, too. You can't even talk about who you're voting for. And it's that's palpable in public. You know, if that's happening with family, imagine with strangers. You know, it's kind of insane when you think about it. But yeah, one of the things that um, I'm considering is I don't want to stay <clears throat> in Portland and in the United States and be constantly talking about how I don't like it here. I don't want to yeah. be a detractor. If other people like Portland and they think it's great, good. I don't want to constantly say, it's not, look, here's what's wrong with it, blah, blah, blah. But if they can't see it, they can't see it. Yeah. But I'm. that's why I'm, after searching through the United States and going to several cities, that's why I'm going overseas to see for myself if I'll, I'll feel better <clears throat> and happier if I'm not in the United States. But I don't want to stay here and make it mm. unpleasant for other people who like it, you know? Yeah. And he's ex-military, too. He he went all over the United States and he said the same thing. It's like no matter where I go, you know, you, the dating market is messed up. Uh, people treat each other like shit. Uh, nobody puts an effort towards relationships. Um, yeah, it's just draining. He's like, it's mentally draining. And the job he has pays very well, doing very good yeah. in life, but it feels meaningless without, you know, deep connections. I'm like, well, yeah, it makes perfect sense. I mean, that's where social I feel, animals. I feel like just some kind of weird some kind of weird PTSD just living in this country. So that's why I want to see, I don't want to blame the country, but I want to see, because I, I know that I'm going to take myself with me when I go somewhere else. But I just want to experience if I'm in a new environment, will that change the way I feel about my life? You know, I told him kind of something similar. I said, we're kind of like plants, you know, it just depends uh, the environment you're in. Some of us are just, we're like basically trapped in a dark corner. And what we really need is some sunlight put outside and you get completely rejuvenated. You go to these new countries and you start to feel, you know, the freedom that you have now to finally live. The, For example, like the Philippines, dude, imagine walking out of your place and you're within five minutes of the beach and there's fucking palm trees everywhere and it's fucking sand and there's little beach bars and people are smiling and laughing and the energy is different. And that kind of environment affects your mood. Environment Environment's super important, man. Environment it alters your state of mind, your consciousness. It does. People have no idea. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's how I feel in, in Portland now is people don't even, it used to be such a friendly <clears throat> city with its, its own camaraderie about being Portland. But now people just, they don't even say hello to you. When you walk down the street, everyone's very private. Most people have headphones in. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's going to be different in Thailand, but I'm just willing to go there and Bangkok looks like a vibrant, pulsing city where Portland's just kind of people wandering around in their pajamas. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The difference is about. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm being a little sarcastic. But it kind of is people like People literally go outside in their pajamas. It's really, there's no, there's no presentation of, I love this city and I want to be a part of it anymore. It's just, anyway, that's, that's my, my yeah. take on it. That's why I've decided I want to try something different. Yeah. It's understandable. Yeah, it's basically the same here in East Pennsylvania, so I get you. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, these guys have been all over the United States, man, and the issue's the same. There's slight changes city to city, um, but the culture rot is kind of omnipresent. It's not like you can go from, like, mm -hmm. Portland to North Carolina, and the shift is absolutely massive, like you would going from, you know, one country to the next in Europe. It's the same equivalent right. distance-wise, but like the entire culture changes, the food changes, the language changes, the customs change. You know, we're just under the whole umbrella of like Americans, but there's slight variations on that. Like you'll go to get the Southern hospitality, but even that has kind of disappeared. There is no real Southern hospitality, you know, or that, that Midwest friendly vibe you get. You know, a lot of that stuff kind of disappeared. You have to go retreat into really, like I was saying to another guy, you have to retreat deep, man, into these small towns, smaller than a town, right? Where people are still actively farming and tending their land, right? You have to go to those kind of like real old, old America. And that's few and far in between. 
And that's not an easy life because you have to live off the land, right? You're asking to give up a ton of amenities or some guys have just said, well, you know, I don't want to pay into the system. I'll go overseas. And if I go overseas, I'll meet far more grounded people that come from, you know, families that are beyond the nuclear, right? Extended family living. They're socialized better. Um, They still believe in God, if that's important to you or religious in general. Um, Family values matter on a societal level. There's no Uh, bailouts from the government like we do here. We actually celebrate and empower single parent households, right? Like we empower women to get divorced. We empower them to raise a kid without the father present. I mean, the state gives you benefits in other countries that doesn't exist. Like, you know, if you leave your man, that's it. In some countries, you get nothing. Sure as hell, the state won't step in and help you. There's no money from the state, right? And that just the way people deal with each other and those kinds of systems is far more pragmatic. But until you leave, it almost seems foreign to you, like, oh, there's normal women, right? Because it's so toxic in the United States, it's almost like all women this, right? You hear a bunch of men say, like, no, it's the same everywhere. It is and it isn't. Like, if you go to the capitals of any major place all over the world, you'll get more or less similar to America, but not the extreme ends that America has become. But the mentality is seeping in. But out there in the suburbs or the regional cities or the provinces, whatever you want to call them, it's completely different, completely different. The mentality, do the people, the way they treat you, the way they show you respect, you know, what they expect, the legacy of having a family, children, all that, traditional gender norms, it's real. But you don't know until you leave. Because we're so far on the extreme end in America that we've normalized so many things that the rest of the world is like scratching their head at that it isn't until you step outside and you go back into the 1970s culture wise where you're like, oh, my God, this is what it was like before. And it's kind of refreshing. I felt that coming to Romania and Bucharest. I was like, wow, dude, this feels like 1990s, 1980s America before the crazy set in. There are families everywhere. It's super safe. Everybody's pushing a baby carriage, right? It's like children playing in the parks. It's full of like children's laughter. You know, that makes you, that raises the mood of everybody. It's just like a safe environment. Kids giggling and laughing and families just talking and no loud yelling. No weird shit is going on. It's just safe, man. That, that, the environment just makes you feel different. If I had to stay in the United States, like I was questioning, should I start a family? Should I have kids? Like, is that even feasible? In the United States, like, okay, public schooling, that's fucking crazy. What are my kids going to be indoctrinated with? What ideas are putting, are they going to be put in their head? You know, is that even realistic to do homeschooling with the cost of living? All the shit, what the fuck? The food is poisoning us. So then I got to watch what they're eating and combat that whole thing, right? And then you go overseas and you start to see that's extremely affordable to have children. There's other kind of state benefits you don't get in America. Like I think I um, recently somebody confirmed with me that Romania, a woman gets two years of maternity leave paid, I believe. Don't quote me on paid. For sure one year is paid, but I believe it's two. Two whole years, guys, where your woman can be at home paid with the children. I mean, that's called family forward thinking. And when you see, yeah, when you see nothing but young couples around you with children, it makes you, it makes you like, I would like that for myself or, wow, that's a beautiful thing. Or look, these people are invested. They have long-term roots planned, right? Like they're committed. Society has to be good. They have to treat society nice because it's for their children, right? They have to make the world a better place for their kids. You know, you have skin in the game. Another part of why America is collapsing so much socially is there's no skin in the game for young men and women anymore. They're collecting dogs and cats, calling themselves dog moms, cat moms. Right. They have nothing, no children, no relationships to speak of. Um, The longest term relationships they have will be like a month or two. They get pumped and dumped right on dating apps. They can't hold on to the opposite sex. What does that do for a person's long term planning and thinking when you don't have somebody that you love, somebody that you call your partner, your spouse, potentially uh, the future mother of your child or the father of your child? You don't tend to look on the longer end of the spectrum of life planning. Because you're still in that selfish state of mind. For me, 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 what can I get? Oh, this date, what can I get out of him? Or what can I get out of her? How can I get her to sleep with me faster? Or, you know, I'll just get a dog. Who needs women? Blah, 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 right? It's like we're all headed down the exact wrong path. That's causing society to crumble. Um, How should I say? Morally speaking, at a faster and faster and faster rate. Like if the last 10 years degraded at the rate that it did, what does the next 10 years look like? All right. I was speaking with that guy on the call, the same thing. The trend is your friend. That's a term in trading when you're day trading, like never try to trade against the trend of the stock. If it's going up, it'll keep going up. If it's going down, it keeps going down. Well, that's America right now. If you were to plot her on a graph and plot moral decay, right? 
then where do you think it's going? Where has it gone in the last 20 years? Like, do you want to be the guy that bets against the trend and go, yeah, but this time it's different. You know, in the next 20 years, right. we're going to have an ups, we're reversing this degenerate. Yeah. It's like, that's not realistic. Like, we know it's getting worse. We know the division is going to if further spread. Yeah, if you're investing in the American moral code, you would you would short it. Exactly. You would short the shit out of it. Yeah. You would short the shit out of it. Yeah. The big short on American morals. That's what it'd be. You'd make out like a millionaire and we're being attacked from all fronts of society. It's not just government. It's religious institutions have become a joke, too. Um, I saw that we had trans pastors now and, you know, all this sort of stuff that obviously shouldn't be allowed, according to the good book. So morally, uh, we're degrading from religion. We're degrading from media. Right. What the news cycle shoves down our throat. Art is now a form of indoctrination. All the young kids are listening to absolute degeneracy today. That's filling their heads up with all that crap. By the time they're 10 years old, they're reciting songs with the absolute raunchiest, disgusting lyrics ever. That should be so inappropriate for a 10 year old to even memorize. All right. The movies that they're watching, the shows that they're watching, everything, dude, from the moment you're born in America, it seems like every single angle imaginable is just hitting you with moral decay. And so by the time you're an adult or somewhat functioning as an adult, you have so much trauma, you have so much insecurity, you're dependent on pharmaceuticals to make you even feel halfway decent. The rest of the time, you have to numb yourself through dopamine hits because the constant comparisons on social media to people who have it all or look perfect or whatever are living your dream life, right? Comparison being the thief of joy. So they have this entire thing mapped out for you the moment you're born of how you're going to be emotionally enslaved and controlled and participating permanently in this system that's designed to keep you down, keep you, um, how should I say, depressed, anxious, you know, all these negative feelings because a person that's feeling negative extremes is easy to manipulate. And we see it in the world today, especially with our politics, especially the politicians themselves and what they promise us versus what they do, the shit that we're being told that's supposed to be healthy versus isn't, right? Oh yeah, dude, Cheerios are healthier than steak and eggs, right? Our own FDA, the food pyramid, the stuff we're told to eat, man, fundamentally, or go get this injection or go do this. It's good for you, right? Like every single form of government, of institution, you know, the all being authorities of society have shown themselves since COVID to be less than trustworthy. And that's putting it kindly. Um, they don't have our best interest at heart. We are living in a charade. People can feel it like they can almost peer through the bullshit. Now they've seen too much. It feels off. You're in a society that doesn't care about you. You're almost working like a slave. You're on the hamster wheel, churning out the cheese for people that only leave little crumbs for you. But you're the one doing the work on the wheel. But they come and get the whole block of cheese and they give you a little slice, right? That's what capitalism feels like today. It's like not working for the average man, but it is working if you're a corporation or an elite or, you know, whatever. Whoever has connections at the top with influence. So, I don't know. That's me rambling on, but thoughts, what do you guys think? Well, just being here in Dubai, you see it. Um, I'm in a multinational tier one city that has all the races in the world, uh, mostly upper class people, wealthy. Damn it. And you can tell, like I wrote some post earlier, I forgot what I said. Let me look at it. Um, I'll tell you right now, because it's exactly what it feels like being here. I would never live here in a million years after coming back. Like I knew I didn't like it before, but it said, um, city life is not for me. It says, uh, oh, the Instagram post. I say, yeah, we'll be retreating into a small mountain town soon. This place does not elicit a peaceful state of mind. Just a cage with a sped up hamster wheel chasing cheese trying to run faster than the hamster next to you. And you can tell it's keeping up with the Joneses on crack here. And despite these people working themselves to the bone to achieve all these nice material possessions, they'll never be truly happy because there's always somebody that will have more than you. There's always somebody that's on a different level than you. But the illusion is that you can one day reach that if you work hard enough and you're never in the present moment, you're living in the future. And that's a stain. That's a that's anxiety. It's a state of anxiousness because you're never content with the present. That's why the present is called the present because it's a present. <laughs> it's a gift. Until you go to a city like this that's really hustling and bustling, New York level city, um, you won't know what I'm talking about. If you live in a smaller town, you may be blessed. Life is slower. Um, people have more uh, time to make connections. Neighbors tend to know that each other more. This I notice going overseas in at least Balkan Europe. You know, everybody knows who lives next to them. People talk, you know, they catch up small talk in the sense of like, how are you? How's the family? How's this? Um, but that's completely 
missing from America. I lived in multiple cities in downtowns, you know, in some of the nicer areas too. So it was safe. So it's not exactly like, hey, don't look at me, don't talk to me kind of energy. It felt, you know, like upper, upper class area. I didn't know who was across the hallway from me literally right across from my door. I didn't know who that person was. Never spoke to them. Maybe saw them a few times after living there for say like a year. And we somehow, you know, like everything aligns that we're both going to the door or opening the door and leaving. And then you're like, oh, that's what the person looks like that lives across from my apartment. And that was it though. And people feel like rushed in a mood, you know, like uh, they open the door, they see you and then uh, quick, put the key in, uh, lock the door and like hurry, scurry off to the elevator and like get down and go about there. No one's like, oh, hey, how are you? Oh, nice to meet you. My name is this. And like, oh, how are you doing today? And none of that, dude. It's just like, oh, shit. I just I don't want to talk to this person right now. They're dealing with their own shit. They feel like, I don't know, something's going on in their life. They're in their own head. They're not in the mood. And it's like, that's the mentality, though. On average, like people feel stressed, man, and they don't have like the mental energy to even expend on somebody else. It's like people are living check to check, you know, barely making it. Like what kind of state does that put you in mentally? So 